x squared minus 1. Now, first of all, we should still always look for a GPS. Okay, it's pretty obvious there's not one right here because 25 and 1 don't have anything in common other than 1. Um, so then we should be thinking, all right, 2 sets of parentheses. Well, this is not a trinomial, okay? This is, um, this is a binomial, but the special case So when you see that, you should automatically think, I'm going to have the exact same thing written in both sets of parentheses, except my signs are going to be different, all right? Um, 5 times 5 gives us 25. 1 times 1 gives us 1. We put a plus in the first, a minus in the second. The order of that really doesn't matter. I just traditionally do plus and then minus. Um, but the reason why this works is because if you do the outside and the inside, you're going to get negative 5x on the outside, you're going to get positive 5x on the inside. Those are going to cancel. We don't end up with that linear term, okay? There's no term with just an x in it. Um, that is how the difference of perfect squares always factors. Okay, number 18, similar, okay? No GCF. The square root of 9 is 3, so we've got 3n in both sets of parentheses. Square root of 25 is 5 plus minus. Okay, now number 19 and 20 are examples of something that we call a perfect square trinomial. Okay, the first and the last terms are perfect squares, 4 and 25 are perfect squares, but it is trinomial this time, there are three terms. The middle term um, is not a perfect square, 20 is not a perfect square, but 20 is a result of combining the other two. So perfect square trinomials, uh, 2x times 2x is going to give us 4x squared. 5 times 5 is going to give us 25. Okay. This time we put negatives in both because that's a negative 20 right there. Um, notice we get the exact same thing in both sets of parentheses and you can check it. You get negative 10x on the outside, you get negative 10x on the inside. That's what's going to give us the negative 20x. What you need to do with this, guys, is you should express your answer when you have the exact same factor listed twice. You need to write it as 2x minus 5 squared. Okay? You need to write it as 2x minus 5 squared. All right? 20 is also a perfect square trinomial. First and last terms are perfect squares. The middle term is 2 times um, the product of their square roots. Okay, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 9 is 3. When you multiply 5 and 3, you get 15. 2 times 15 is 30. This time it's positive because it's positive 30. So the answer to this one is 5r plus 3 squared. And when we have a quiz on this, uh, probably, let's see, what is today? Tuesday? Friday, you we'll probably have a quiz on the factoring here. Um, I will count off if you don't put if you don't write it as that factor squared. Okay. All right. Uh, Twenty-one is just another example of the difference of perfect squares. It's just written in a different order. Okay. The variable comes second, but it's still the same thing. Okay. Um, we would have two plus five m times two minus five m in this case. You do not have to keep it in that order, but if you don't keep it in that order, you're potentially going to uh, mess up the signs. Okay, um, so I suggest, even though the variable does come second, I do suggest leaving it like this so you don't have to worry about factoring out a negative and signs getting messed up. Okay, um, 22. Okay, 22, back to the trinomial, 16 and 9 are perfect squares. 24 is 2 times their product of the square roots. So 4p minus 3 squared. I'm just skipping that intermediate step. If you have to show it, that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you recognize that as a perfect square trinomial, you can go ahead and jump to that step. Okay. A few more examples here. 23 through 26. Um, 
they have GCS. Okay. Now, 23 is a perfect uh, is the difference of perfect squares. 16 and 4 are perfect squares. However, we can still take out a GCF there. 16 and 4 have a GCF of 4. So let's start by taking out the 4. We're left with 4n squared minus 1. 4n squared minus 1 is still a perfect square. So the final answer, the fully factored answer here, would be 4 times 2n plus 1 times 2n minus 1. Now, 24 is an example of one that is not the difference of perfect squares from the get-go. It looks like it should be because it's a binomial, you're missing the linear term, there's a minus sign in between, but 48 and 75 are not perfect squares. However, they have a GCF of 3, and if we take out that GCF of 3, what we are left with are perfect squares. 16 and 25 are perfect squares. Okay, so then we can factor that as the difference of perfect squares. 4 minus 5v, 4 plus 5v. Again, the order does not matter. Usually I put the plus first. For some reason, I put the minus first this time. I don't know why. Doesn't matter. All right, almost there. Uh, 25. 25, we got a little bit more going on here. Okay, um, 32, 16, and 2. They have a GCF of two, but what is up with that x cubed, okay? We've got x cubed, x squared, and x, so let's take out an x. They all have an x. When we take out an x, we've got 16x squared plus 8x plus, what's our last term? One, okay, plus one. What we're left with is a perfect square trinomial. 16x squared plus 8x plus 1 is 4x plus 1 squared. Okay, 26 has a GCF of 3. So when we take out the 3, we've got 9 minus uh, 24r plus 16r squared. 9 minus 24r plus 16r squared is a perfect square trinomial because 9 and 16 are perfect squares. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. This is a perfect square trinomial. So we got 3 minus 4r squared is the factor. Again, if you need that intermediate step, and I know this one is, is a little bit more complicated, Up, but show you 